Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all fandoms, welcome to the Ferret and Raccoon podcast episode 136. I am the Indigenous Owl. And I'm the Angry Raccoon. And uh, we're back for the first podcast of March already. Um, pretty crazy how fast things have been flying. Yeah. Um, 2020 is pretty much almost becoming a nothing year, given how little has happened, how little impact it's already made <laughs> to some extent. Like, I'm really thinking about April. Oh, yeah, I'm already thinking about April. Damn. Um, there are a few reasons why, obviously. But, um, okay. yeah, things have been all over the place, obviously. Um, not just in this country, all over the world. Everyone is kind of panicking to some extent. Yeah. Which you're going to kind of talk about to some extent uh, in a minute. But uh, it's been a while since you've been on, Al. Yeah. Uh, what have you been up to over the last rough kind of weeks or so? Um. So I've pretty much been just back and forth from work. Mm-hmm. Um. So... Not much, nothing exciting there, but in terms of like what I have been watching and what the last games I've played. So recently, I went over to my friend's house and we started playing like um, DDR games, so dance, dance, rhythm games. Mm-hmm. Um, the like the Konami ones. So um, at first, like, cause she really loves those games, and I'm just like, they're like, oh, okay, uh, not too sure. Because I always see the people in the arcades, oh, the pro players, and they're yeah. holding the bar yeah. and they're doing that foot movement. And yeah, I'm like... They, they, they be taking their shoes off, yeah. putting on the special socks. Yeah, like, mm. I'm like, oh my goodness. Oh, it's no joke. It's like, it's almost like a video game subsection religion. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> and it's just like, whoa, that's madness. But she has it on the PS2. So I thought, okay, let me try it out. Mm-hmm. And funny enough, like after I tried it out for the second time, I was like, you know what? I'm invested. Damn. And she just literally was like, sure, I'll give you a copy of one of my games. Wow. Yeah. She was like, I have like four of them. I don't really need all of them. So you can have one. And Damn, that's pretty generous. Yeah. So she just gave me one of the copies of her games. And wow. like, she said like, yeah, I'd like for you to practice on the game. So you like, one day you can beat me. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> challenge. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that's, that'd be interesting. But yeah. So I've kind of been invested in DDR games. Mm hmm. Uh, in terms of the last thing I've watched, um, so the last thing I watched was uh, the Netflix series Sex Education. Which um, season? It's I at the moment I'm on season one. Okay. I haven't finished season one yet. Okay. So that was I was I think I was on like episode six or something like that. Mm-hmm. But um, so I'll talk a little bit about like the plot. But I'm just gonna say like it kind of when I was watching it, it kind of is like a mixture between like. In between us, in my opinion, like in between us, uh, a little bit of Glee, but that's because of something in one specific episode kind of reminded me of Glee element. I don't know what it was. Okay. Uh, but it was just yeah, I kind of had that weird vibe about it. Mm-hmm. And then another series, it's ca- another couple of series, it's reminded me of is like, um, do you know the series uh, Cucumber? Yeah, came out on Ch- Channel Four. Banana and strawberry, yeah, or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind of reminds me of the elements of those shows as well. Okay. So if you're into that kind of those shows, you probably will like Sex Education. Okay. Um. So basically, it's about like this boy called Otis. Um. He's the main character. He's really like unsure about the like about sex in general. Of just talking about it, it's like almost like he's very it's like nervous for him to talk about almost taboo, which is understandable. Yeah, yeah. and um, but the the weird thing is his mom's a sex therapist, mm-hmm. so she's just open minded and she's just talking about it all the time. Mm. And um, eventually, he basically helps. Um, he gives well, it gives advice to somebody who um, at his school that's basically struggling with sexual performance, and then after that, it's like he him and his one of his classmates called Maeve um, start basically doing their own like sexual, um, how was it? Like sex therapy advice. Sex advice. Sex yeah. advice, sorry. Yeah. Sex advice kind of things with fellow, for fellow students in sixth form. So it's pretty interesting. It's very funny. I wasn't expecting it to be like as it was, mm-hmm. but it is enjoyable. I definitely give it a watch. Does it, does it go any further than just like the core concept of just giving advice to, people no uh yeah it does it actually has a storyline okay. to okay. it it's not just sex because from the yeah. from the trailer when we talked about it on the podcast and when i saw it in that i just thought it was just gonna be that yeah i thought that as well which is fine that's still serviceable and informative and you yeah. can make that entertaining but i was honestly just kind of like eh, i don't really need a show like that yeah. but um it's interesting to know that it has like a little bit more going for it i yeah, guess you could say it does. um that's quite interesting yeah i know second season's out and there were promoting the hell out of that for oh, whatever really? reason yeah lots of 
posters around my area and lots of um, cross promotion yeah. advertising with the characters and that. So I was like, okay, but that's good. Um, good that you enjoyed it. Anything else you want to uh, no, talk about? That's okay, it. fair enough. Um, all right, I haven't really done too much either. I mean, I watched so many films uh, for the last podcast that I kind of took it easy and all these other things I'm about to talk about coming up real soon was just like, oh, just so much time taken yeah. out of the day. The only thing I managed to watch, which is a film I've been meaning to watch for such a long time ever since it was uh, brought up on our end of year podcast, thanks to Ace, and that was An, Ele- An Elephant Sitting Still. Oh, yeah. I Finally watched that film. It is long. That is the, the first thing people <laughs> are going to yeah. talk about. It. It's um almost four hours long. But when you watch the film, it is worth every minute because that film is so much in and it, it almost feels short yeah given how much this film covers and talks about and discusses i could be here for an hour talking about all the things that this film is about and tries to do yeah and all that stuff but the base basic premise of it is it takes place in china a very poor populated excuse me, area in China, and it follows four main characters. It follows um, one teenage kid, a teenage a boy, sorry, a teenage female, a um, old man or grandfather, and a, another man who seems to be connected with the kind of gangs around this area. Okay. And we go back and forth following these characters' stories, and we kind of see their stories kind of intertwine in and out with each other, because the main through line with this film is that they're in a really bad situation, a really bad place. Things escalate in such a bad situation, uh, in such a bad way that it almost becomes hopeless and depressing for these characters, given that this film takes place in the course of literally 24 hours. Yeah. And the one thing that kind of connects all these characters together is the fact that they've heard that in the town over, there is supposedly an elephant that sits still. Right. And that's kind of the film. That's kind of like the end goal is we got to like we got to go see this elephant sitting still and you don't really know whether it's like a real thing or not you don't know whether it's like a metaphor you, mm. you don't know but over the course of the film you start to get clues and you start to see things kind of happen with these characters and it's as i've already alluded to it's a very depressing film it's very upsetting at points not to the point of it being like disgusting or horrible but like you can really relate in some places with certain characters, certain situations, and it does feel like absolutely devastating at some points. It is, it feels more like a um, a play, not to discredit the film to some extent, but it 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 is just done so well. And I mean, even the choice of um, uh, cinematography, mm. it's mostly almost done handheld wise. Wow, which actually creates an interesting connection with the audience and the actors because. One thing that's done very interestingly is a lot of shots are dead focused on the main character and characters in the background are blurred out. Right. So a lot of the time characters will be speaking to other characters for a good five minutes. You won't even see their face properly. Mm. There are some characters you don't even see their face, period. Yeah. Because they're not important. We're following this character. It's about this character. Yeah. And they do that in such clever ways. It is brilliant. And even the fact that it almost feels like the whole film realistically was probably... um, well, it feels like you're literally just watching these people's events because the way the camera moves, it's yeah. kind of unnatural. It's as if you were watching this person and they get up and then the camera's like, oh, oh, it's over here. Oh, and that. So okay. it's done almost like fly on the wall to some extent, but, it... not in a, but not in a way that is fly on the wall. It gone. I was going to say, is, is it kind of like a chronicle? You know how it's like recorded on... In that no, sense? no, oh, okay. no. It's, um, it is a film that you oh, okay. are following them. It's not like someone's following these people, but oh, okay. that's kind of the... That's kind of how I um, took that kind of camera approach. Yeah. Um, which makes it just feel like, yeah, you're watching these people because... And it's and it's very interesting the way things just happen. Some yeah. bleak and upsetting things just happen because that's just life. Yeah. Like, literally, you could be walking down the street and someone could die. And the film just portrays it like that. And uh, it is an amazing film. I would highly recommend everyone watching it. If you can watch Avengers, Endgame, and It Chapter 2, you can watch this film because those films are just as long as it. So, absolutely fantastic film. I cannot wait to watch this film again, you know, even though it is, like, so long. But I would recommend it. It's worth watching. If you like film, if you like story, and you can kind of handle, (laughs) like, sadder things, because I'm going to say this again, it's a sad film, I would highly recommend watching it okay but that was the main film i watched over the last two weeks and i'm so glad i did um gonna kind of talk about some of the things that happened over the last fortnight because uh things went a bit crazy 
<laughs> uh, the first major thing was, of course, I got to talk about Resident Evil Three remake. Um, Capcom, for whatever reason, decided, yep, we're going to drop more information, more gameplay, and I watched all of it, and I was like, damn, this is game of the year. I'm not going to go into all the details because I know, obviously, not everyone knows what's going on in that game and that, but um, yeah, I'm both excited and scared for this game simply because uh, Nemesis, one of the main threats in it, he's he's going to go in, like. No joke, I'm gonna be screaming. Come day, morning, evening, this is this is no joke. <laughs> but um I'm looking forward to that, so it's nice to see some more information come out of that. Also, a lot of anniversaries, as we'll talk about later on the yeah. podcast, a lot of anniversaries over the last few weeks. Um the band Gorillas, the animated band Gorillas, their third album, Plastic Beach, turned ten years old as of uh, March third, which is quite crazy given that that's like their most ambitious album. Naturally, I went back and listened to the album again, and I was like, yep, as an age today, <laughs> still classic. But um, I just wanted to throw that out because um, it's crazy because I love the fact that so many albums come and go. Yeah. And lots of albums, people don't even care about their anniversary. This is an album that you're like, yeah, I need to, you know, re-remember. Not even re-remember. I need to, I don't even know how to put it. I need to give appreciation once again. So I did the the yearly listen of the album. Oh, okay. Because I only ever listen to the album once a year. Yeah. Granted, when it first came out, I listened to it about like 50 times. But since then, I listened to it at least once a year. Because it is one of my favorite albums of all time. So I wanted to mention that. Um, PAX East happened. Not a lot of games showed off. Um, mainly Borderlands 3 stuff I was interested in, which was kind of cool. The next DLC is coming out. It's going to have a Lovecraft theme to it. It's pretty cool. Other than that, wasn't really too much else I really cared about, mainly because uh, so many people pulled out because of the uh, coronavirus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it kind of has uh, people a bit scared, people not turning up for events and stuff like that, and uh, the future of certain events uh, being very uncertain, which uh, I think is getting a bit annoying to some extent. I think we can all agree on that. But, um, I mean, as long as you are keeping safe and being hygienic... Everyone should be fine. Yeah. Then again, I have seen just this morning a video clip of a girl licking like a hand pole. And I was just oh, like, mm. no. and you wonder why the coronavirus is still a thing. And also it's worth noting, um, 30% and 50% of men and women don't wash their hands after using the bathroom. Ugh. So we probably have a long way to go, <laughs> unfortunately. And uh, last thing I want to quickly mention as a kind of like almost tease towards like uh, later podcasts, um, Record Store Day 2020, they've released their release list. I'm not going to go over all the maybe hundreds of things they're (laughs) releasing, obviously, because we don't have time for that. (laughs) But um, I'm excited and fingers crossed my favorite shop does not cancel because of coronavirus. (laughs) So that was kind of like the roundup of things that happened over the last... uh, um, few weeks, including one we're going to be talking about later on. But um, let's move on to our first news story and topic, which I believe I have this one, or were you going to cover this one? Um, I can introduce it if you like. Yeah, uh, you introduce this one. Yeah. Okay, so um, the trailer release of uh, Samurai Jack Battle Through Time. Um, so, yeah, I actually first saw this trailer on Facebook and I was like, wait, they're doing a new game of Samurai Jack? What? What? Yeah. Nani? I think that was pretty much everyone's reaction. Yeah. I was like, oh. Yeah. Oh, we going in? You know? Wait, yeah, exactly. So um, I think the game actually looks... Well, I think Samurai Jack is going to be great. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'd, I'd be surprised if they somehow... I mean, granted, this is a different studio making the game. Oh, okay. In terms of... The only way I can see this game not being good is if it somehow doesn't play well. Yeah. In terms of everything else, fantastic. Beautiful. Um... It looks like the series, which mm. is nice. I would have liked it to look a little bit more like the series, like um, like the use of backgrounds, the use of colours. Yeah. Fantastic. It honestly feels like the world, and it does feel um, very fateful. I, I guess my only kind of like issues with, I guess, the general look is I want it to look more 2D. Mm. I, like, I wish it was somehow like a 2D game. Right. But I get they want it to be like a hack and slash. So obviously, yeah. hack and slashes are in 3D for the most part. And it the the 2D style does blend well 3D to to or translate well to a 3D model. Yeah. It's just it's kind of weird seeing Jack in a 3D three dimensional plane. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Because one thing that kind of bothered me a lot was like his eyes. 
because his eyes are so like squared and his character yeah. is so straight and squared off and just harsh. Yeah. You know, here it's not as much, which is fine. It's an adaptation. I've noticed his eyes kind of extend and almost trail off his face. Oh, I didn't notice that. Yeah, it's something I noticed. It's not something that kills the game for me. It's just, it's just an issue of. 2D translating to 3D. 2.5D. 2.5D to some extent, maybe, yeah. Um, isn't Like I said, it's not something that breaks the game yeah. for me. It's just like one of those, ooh, ooh, that's not how Jack looks, you know. Yeah. It's kind of one of those things. But um, it's interesting because there isn't much gameplay on it. There is gameplay out there, but yeah. it's very sparse. I did watch yeah. some of it, but I didn't watch a lot of it because I don't want spoilers. Yeah, of course. I yeah. haven't finished season five, which I'll get onto in a sec. But... Um, it looks like it's going to, from what I can gather, it's going to be both fast and slow yeah. in terms of combat, which is quite interesting with uh, hack and slashes today. And yeah, the only thing I will say that's kind of spoilerific is it seems that um, pretty much every character from the original series is going to be back in this game. Right. And even their voice actors are going to be back, which is pretty cool, um, which does lead me to think what is exactly is going to the story going to be about yeah um because from what they've said because they haven't really said they haven't said they're just going to do the whole series they've kind of said they're going to do like a different take on the story yeah so my guess is that it's going to be not like a retelling or you play the whole all five seasons but more it's like an alternate timeline yeah so essentially different events different ending same characters met on the adventure Right. Because they've already showed off a lot of the characters there, which obviously are fan favourites and some slightly more obscure ones. Like, there's, you can see, like, the archaeologist dogs there. Like, they're in the game, and they were only in, like, one episode. Oh, right. So, and they're in episode two. Yeah. And they're just a bunch of talking dogs, and they're in the game. Even if it might just be a cameo, they're still there. Right. So, that's kind of interesting. I do also wonder if, given that you see Jack, how he looks in season five. Yeah. It does make me wonder if they are gonna possibly change the ending of season five because I know some people didn't really like the ending. Okay. I don't know what the ending is, but a lot of people didn't like it. Yeah. So, anything else you want to say about this game? Because um, I know this is slightly yeah. more in your kind of field in terms of like video yeah, games. Yeah, um, no, I was just gonna say like when I saw it, when it um, came out of like the cutscenes of the animation when it went into the gameplay, it kind of looked like um. The graphics kind of reminded me of like old PS2 graphics for some reason. It kind of looked like a game that was released in early 2000s. I don't know what it was. I felt like it It did have some elements to it. Yeah, like not saying like it looks old or yeah. bad, but like, yeah, kind of reminiscent of yeah. that era. Yeah, I don't, I wonder if that's intentional. Yeah, because it is, well, battle through time. Maybe it isn't. Maybe, Maybe it's it is intentional. intentional. Maybe, Who knows? I don't know. Because um, for those of you who don't know, Samurai Jack is really quick. It's essentially about a samurai who gets you know, sent to the future where the main villain has essentially taken over and it's essentially his struggle to essentially beat this evil, restore order and turn back return back to his original time period. Yeah. Yeah, that could be a thing, but um I don't know. Isn't I mean, I'm looking forward to this game. I'm I'm pretty hyped for it. I, I do have concerns. I, I hope that the game isn't loud. Oh okay. in, in the sense that like the original series used music so sparingly. Yeah. And, you know, to points of where there was no sound or no dialogue to the point where it was literally like show, don't yeah. tell for a lot of the time, which is what I love about the series and what makes it so unique, especially in the early 2000s where every cartoon was like trying to be the most obnoxious thing ever. <laughs> but um, like, I hope that they haven't just added constant music because it's a video game. Yeah. Like, I want there to be points where, like, Jack is traveling and it's like dead silent or he's just overlooking like yeah. a landscape and it's just silent. It just lets you take in everything. Hopefully there's moments like that, which will make it more like fateful and more um, atmospheric. But that's what I'm hoping for. But I can't wait for this game, honestly. It's uh, definitely on my list now. Uh, anything else you want to add no, that's to it. it? All right. Well, let's move on to the um, next trailer. The um, One of the only two film trailers we have. And it's unfortunately not a very original one. And that is going to be uh, Candyman 2020. Um Essentially, a remake of the original Candyman from the 90s. Originally, Jordan Peele, who did Us and Get Out, was going to direct this, I believe. But he's no longer directing. He's producing it. Some other director's doing this now. And... Whew, my, <laughs> my first impressions of this trailer was it, it reminded me a lot of the trailer for Velvet Buzzsaw. 
Do you know of that no. film? No. Okay. It's a Netflix film. It wasn't very good, in my opinion. It's a film... That film tried way too hard to be scary, and it just ended up being funny. Oh, right. And it thought it was, like, being really deep in that because it was, like, commenting on, like, modern art and trying to, like, make some kind of statement somewhere okay. along the lines about art and modern art and criticism yeah. and that kind of stuff. And it just came off as um, just really stupid. And this trailer I honestly found to be absolutely hilarious. I thought it was an absolute joke. Like, <laughs> if you told me this was a comedy, I would have believed you. <laughs> because this is just... It's just a joke. I mean, the main issue I have with this trailer, which you should never really do, is they are... Uh, they're obviously, or they're really trying too hard to make this trailer or this film seem like it's us from 2019. Right. When it's obviously not. It should be its own thing. Yeah, it's a remake, but be your own thing. And the most apparent thing is the fact that they try and do the same thing that the Us trailer does, where they use the classic song. Or, well, seriously, they use a classic song. So, for example, in the Us trailer, they use, um, what's his name? Got Five on Loomis, it. Loomis has oh. got five on it, yeah. And they did something very clever with it, which not a lot of people notice, but it's what made that version and the film slightly iconic. You know, they essentially played the song original. They played it straight. They familiarized you with the song, you know, the famous, you know, little beat, the kind of like um, lullaby instrumental. Yeah. They kind of familiarized with that. And then once things start to go a bit weird, they start to change the song and it becomes a different song. Same song, but they change the instrumentals to kind of, you know, literally tell you, Things are getting weird. Things are changing. It's not what you thought mm. it was. That kind of stuff. Literally, they took that jingle and that beat and they essentially took it from a, like a hip-hop lullaby, you know, xylophone mm. beat sound and then turned it into this massive opera string sound that was like really like, oh my gosh, you know. Mm. And that was genius because obviously it took something original. It played your expectations because now you're like, oh my God, what the hell is going on? Yeah. You know, I, I wasn't expecting this. Here, they took Destiny's Child's Say My Name, slowed it down, and then just kept repeating the Say My Name part, because obviously... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Candyman, say his name. Uh, uh, uh. You know, it's just annoying. It's not subtle at all. Yeah. And it's nowhere near as effective. And also, you shouldn't be aping off someone else's trailer or someone else's work if you're your own thing. Yeah. I understand it's the same studio that made both films. I get that. I get marketing trends and that. But it's just pathetic at the end of the day. And there's other things I just don't get in this trailer. Like, you know that shot where the main character's explaining Candyman? Yeah. And he's, like, weirdly explaining it like a madman? Yeah, And yeah. the camera's right in his face? Yeah. I don't know about you, but that just reminded me of a Key and Peele sketch. <laughs> like, I was half <laughs> expecting one of them two to be the person he was talking to or something That's like that. That's funny. That's I was actually like, funny. Like, it looked like the framing was like, like no one realistically explains that or explains something like that. Like, yeah. I don't get if he's supposed to be Candyman at that point or yeah. what, but that just looked weird. I didn't really get it. There's so many things I just like, I get they're trying to modernize Candyman and make him like a trend or a challenge. Oh my yeah. God, you, you say in the mirror, you come get, you know, something that kids will, um, you know, try and do or whatever. But that whole scene with the girls in the bathroom yeah, I that think. that bothered me on so many. It was so unnatural. That was so unnatural because it's like they were all standing apart for some weird reason. Realistically, if you're doing this with your friends, would you not be huddled up? Would mm. you not at least be a little bit closer? One of them would probably be off in the back, being like, "No, no, I'm not gonna do it." Yeah, they're all standing there, and it was so unnatural because let me let me put it this way: no one stands that far apart from a person. No. no one is like, I've got to stand 50 centimetres away from you. Um, no one looks in the mirror standing completely still, back straight, dead centre of the frame of a mirror, and does whatever. You just don't do that. It looks like they were posed there. Yeah. And it just comes across as so fake. Yeah. No one would do that. It just like, it was just so unnatural. And I mean, there's also a lot of inconsistencies with Candyman's hook. <laughs> I've watched this trailer a lot. Sometimes his hook is like, the size of a human hand and then sometimes it's like comedically large like in the bathroom scene it's huge when it's drawing the curtain back yeah and so i i get that the main character is going to become candy man spoilers 
because the trailer pretty much ruins it. Um, but why is it different? Like, is it? I, I don't get it. Like, I was like, why would you not just change that? Like, if he's meant to be, what? Like, I don't know what they're doing. It, it's just so that stuff bothers me. The CGI was poor. That was really that was shockingly bad. Candyman himself looks like a cartoon. <laughs> I know what some people are thinking. Oh, you don't see Candyman in the trailer. You do. If you watch the trailer close enough, you see him, and he looks bad. <laughs> he looked like I said, he looks like a cartoon. Um, all those shots of people being picked up and carried by the Invisible Man that just looks stupid, and generally, it, it, it just looked bad. It just looked bad, which is really I get it. It's a low budget film. I'm not gonna rip on a film that has a low budget, but yeah, you can do better than that. If you had the same budget as Get Out, you can do better than that. Yeah. Um. And the last thing I guess I want to mention is uh, this film is apparently connected to the original Candyman, Candyman's films. Okay. Um, which is like, no, it's not. <laughs> but I'm like, oh, if that's the case, um, why did you call this one Candyman? Yeah. Like, oh, it's because you're banking off the success of the original films, which aren't even that good. Most people don't even like that film. And... I don't understand. Why didn't they just call it Candyman Returns? They could have called it Candyman Returns. They could have had it be a soft reboot. They could have essentially done their own original story involving Candyman coming back. Yeah. But still had nods to the original film. And everyone would have been happy because, oh, new Candyman film. Oh, Candyman's back. You know, this new guy's going to become Candyman. Stupid. I was so disappointed in this trailer. Simply because it could have been something. And it's just generic and just boring. And it just really frustrates me. And it's the reasons why people are more interested in films like Parasite. Because mm. at least films like Parasite are interesting and well made. And yeah. actually have some... They have... Well, not let's say something to say, but they have a purpose to exist. Someone clearly wanted to tell this story. With Candyman, someone clearly wants to make some money. Mm. And that's annoying. <laughs> um... Next trailer we have, which I believe you're going to bring in. Yep. Um, so uh, I'm going to be talking about Connected 2020, which is basically um, an animated f- film. I'd say like it's a family friendly film. Maybe. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, so it's directed by uh, Michael. OK, I probably can't pronounce his surname very well. Rianda. Um, forgive yeah. me if I pronounced that wrong. Yeah. Um, but it's, ba- it's his first film that he well, it's the first film he's directing. Yes. So, um, from what the... It just seems like... Well, from what I got from the trailer, it's pretty much just a normal family. Dad, basically, um, reminiscing over, like, the relationship he's had with his daughter growing up and, like, how she's become a young young woman. She's going off to college. She gets accepted into her college. And then, like, I like this, the bit where they're on the table and he's like, oh, yeah, you know, we need to spend time together mm. and, you know, just putting this technology away and just looking at each other and then I love the bit where like the sun's straining and he's just like staring and, he, and he's like no not that way if you look they're weirdly all doing that as well oh they're all not blinking I don't know if that's just poor animation or what but oh, like they're yeah. all kind of all three of them are kind of straining as yeah. well yeah and then um, well and then the bit where the um, like when the daughter's still on the laptop and the dad like kind of pushes it off her and then it breaks to be she, fair yeah. i watched that trailer no she's the one who throws it oh she's the one that throws it it, it okay. was in her hand lost oh so okay she technically she threw, threw it. it okay and then she gets annoyed and she storms off and she's ready to leave and then when she's ready to get up the next day and then like they go um she gets out of the house and then the dad's like yep i cancelled your plane tickets we're going on the car ride and we're dropping you to your college i i thought it was just gonna be like a generally just a general family film Mm -hmm. going for normal family normal family struggles whatever but then it's the bit where they started introducing the whole robots technology taking over the world that's when i got kind of just off put i feel like it's just overdone yeah that's um i found too many issues with this trailer or film i have secretly been looking forward to this film for a while okay because this film, the director, he, I think he co-wrote um, Gravity Falls. Oh, wow. Okay. So I've been very interested in his project because I'm glad that someone who went from one success is obviously going on to do bigger yeah. things, especially his own original film. Yeah. Um, so I was really happy. This film had a different name. 
It only has oh. recently been changed. It originally was called um, the Mich- Michelles versus the Machines. Oh. Which obviously makes a lot of sense now, yeah. given what's happened. Why the hell it was changed to Connected? Connected, yeah, that makes no I, sense. I get it. Reconnecting with your family mm, technology. Yeah, but uh, but here's the thing. That's such a generic name. Yes, yeah, generic. And there's, I think, two other films coming out this year called Connected. Oh, no. I don't think they're going to be as popular or whatever. I yeah. think one's like a low-budget oh, film. Oh, fair enough. But Connected, that doesn't make me want to go see. It's the same with Disney's Onward. Mm. Like, if you haven't seen anything with Disney's Onward, what the hell does that mean? Yeah. Onward to what? Most children don't even know what Onward means. Yeah. Oh, it's a fantasy story about elves. Okay. Okay. You could you could have told me it was a you could have told me it was about pirates and I've gone yeah that makes sense onward mm. yeah onward to the sea yeah, um, yeah. The weird thing about this film, which is kind of unfortunate and it's not a negative against them, is have you kind of noticed a lot of advertising and marketing has been based around like how technology has made us so far apart yep. and how we should reconnect and yeah. you know but you got to buy our products to help you reconnect yeah because of that marketing trend this film comes off as really preachy and old now yeah that's not necessarily the film's fault and i'm yeah. not going to fault the film for that yeah. it's just I, I i guess poor not bad timing yeah. is the word and i'm not that's not their fault but it's a shame because already i'm like oh this again yeah which is a shame because the film could go on to be fantastic. Yeah. Don't know. It could go on to say some really interesting things, but I do think it kind of uh, contradicts itself, unfortunately, in, in a few cases. I have watched this trailer a few times, and it's it's very bizarre because there's things I I want hopefully get explained. Like, so the dad is like very much like, oh, my daughter, she's used to yeah. me, and now she's on the phone and all that. Does he consider the son a lost cause then? Oh, why'd you say that? that? Because he doesn't... He's so focused on the daughter. The son is just as addicted, it seems. That's a good point, actually. Now that you bring that up. And I thought... I, I did. I think... I thought about this, like, literally when I was in bed. And I was like, what about the son? I mean, a, ch- a younger child being addicted to screens is much more of an issue than then, a 18-year-old. Because yeah. I would imagine she's a lot more responsible, yeah. despite the fact being, you know, addicted to her phone. And she yeah. seems, well, she's going to college. She has some kind of responsibility. Yeah. She has some kind of goal and aim right. in life. I would be perfectly fine if my daughter was hooked to a phone and wanted to go to college. I would not be happy with my son constantly wanting to be on the phone at his age. I would be like, no, we need to stop that. I feel like it might be a little bit of a missed opportunity to not focus on the sun because he just kind of seems like he's just going to be like the runt of jokes, mm. unfortunately. So that was one thing I was like, that's a bit weird. Is the sun not mm. going to get any character? Like, kind of seems like he kind of went a bit uh, backwards with that. And th- the other things that kind of bothered me was like that shot in the very beginning where like the daughter's trying to take a picture of her dad. Yeah. And he's like, oh, you know, you can experience things if you don't look through the phone. And she weirdly says, I had to write this down. She says, dad, this is how I experience things. And she then proceeds to put her dad over like a cat filter. And I immediately went, that's really unhealthy. Mm. Like, and that's super unrealistic. I don't think anyone has ever fucking said that. No, no one has. I don't, I, like, if you can find video evidence of someone saying that... Sure, prove me wrong. But I would still say that is something people do not say. Yeah. I also would kind of say that's kind of a bit of poor writing on the film's part Mm. because I don't think people write like that. I mean, just for example, no one... You don't go to a music concert of your favourite artist and then hold your camera over your eyes for the whole no, the whole experience and go, this is how I want to experience Beyonce live. No. Yeah, you would take pictures, you would film things, you wouldn't have it over your eyes the whole time. No. You wouldn't constantly have it in your hand, would you? No. I feel... I think that was just... I don't like that line. I think that's a bit... That doesn't work for me. Yeah, I think that no, almost no. breaks the film. Yeah. The other line, <laughs> unfortunately, breaks the film for me is when they throw the laptop and she literally says, this is exactly why I'm excited to leave tomorrow. I understand she's emotional and she most likely doesn't mean it. But... That line makes that character so unlikable to the point I don't care anymore. Right. Because, let me put it in this context. 
Imagine if you or anyone you know said that to your family and then they died the next day. That would have been the last thing she would have said to her parents. Basically, fuck off. And you would have had to live with that for the rest of your life. Mm. I understand people say things they regret. That was just a bit much, in my opinion. And also, on a slightly more joking side, I hope she did apologise because I don't think she's paying for her uni fees. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure the dad and the mum are. So you might want to, pro tip for life, guys, maybe treat your parents with a little bit of respect when you want to go to uni or college. Because guess who's paying the bills? Um, yeah. Going back to what you were saying, yeah. though. I think it's too much. I think mm. there's too much going on in the story. Because, like you already mentioned, we already have the whole family wants to reconnect. Yeah. We have the road trip. Yeah. And now we have the whole Y2K robot takeover yeah. apocalypse which is ultimately going to end in a robot battle. Yeah, and I'm like, oh. One other thing to keep in mind, those two robots you see in the trailer, characters in the film, we're going to be having more time with those characters as well, their main characters, well, side characters yeah. or whatever. It, it's too much, I think. Also, all of those things I've said, not that original. I've seen no. them before. Yeah. And I'm just like... and it's so, And it's kind of annoying because... Let's be real. I think we can all agree on this. The animation style is really nice. Yeah. Nice 2D art style on 3D art style. Yeah. I think that's great. I want to see more stuff like that. Especially compared to like Disney films now where they all look the same. Yeah. I'm happy that Sony of all people are like, no, we're going to do something, something different. different. Yeah. Yes. I'm happy with that. I just... I hope this film is good. I hope that these are the only flaws in the film. Yeah. And it's just no more to it than that because... Oof. Yeah. It has promise. It has promise. And yeah. Disney Studios have made a nice comeback from uh, Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse. I think that film is super overrated. Mm. But if people enjoy it, that's fine. I love the fact that people are enjoying animation now. But um, yeah, it's just... Mm. I think we're a bit we're very hit and miss with that film, aren't we? Mm, Unfortunately. It is. Yeah. Oh, well, let's move on to um, something a little bit more positive, which I believe you're going to introduce our discussion. Yeah. So basically, we're going to be talking about our cherished PS2 memories, as PS2 is celebrating its twenty, it celebrated its twentieth anniversary on the fourth of March. Yes. So, who would like to go first? Um, I want to say something real quick. Yeah, go for it. Like the PS2 is such an interesting console. Yes, it is. It is. It is definitely like. I mean, I know you can say like the PS1 or the NES was yeah. a game changer. PS2 was a big deal especially yeah. in this country alone. It turned heads, I mean, mostly because you had that DVD player. Yeah. You know, one of the first DVD players ever to kind of go into distribution. Exactly. The PS2 is also the longest running console of all time. Yeah. Um, it lasted a while. Even when PS3 came out, yeah, it was still around, still making games in Japan. Yeah. You go to Japan now, you will still find games, not necessarily being made, but yeah. you will find games that came out in like... 2009-ish, yeah. 2010-ish, but they were far and few between. Also, I learned a few things about the PS2 as well, like um, the little PS2 logo. You can apparently turn that. Yeah, you didn't know that? I didn't know that. Oh, wow. <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah. I didn't grow up with a PS2. Oh, that's why. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I was I was the kid who went around other people's houses to play PS2. Oh, you fair know? enough. So I played all the games. I just never yeah. like had the console. So, yeah. you know, so PS2 is a big deal. Yes. And if you go yeah. throughout the PS2's history and all the kinds of things and all the games that I guess the older people like us are screaming about, like, bring that back. It's yeah. all on PS2 for the most part. Um, and other consoles. That generation in general, let's say Xbox yeah. and... Um, I could just say GameCube. Yeah, yeah, GameCube, yeah. Yeah, that generation. So it is a big deal. Yeah. Um, did you want to go first or should I? Because I've only got three stories I really want uh, to talk about. Let's, um, let's see how many stories I've got. Um... I think I've got quite a few, actually, so we can probably just... Back and forth. Back and forth, I guess. Uh, let me go... You go first. No, actually, you go first, because okay. you have more. Yeah, sure. Okay, so I'd actually like to start off from when I actually first got my PS2. Oh, yeah. So Standing in line in the cold. <laughs> yeah. So when I you were, actually... like, what, eight years old? <laughs> seven, actually. Seven. seven. <laughs> um, so it was actually... It's funny, because at the time, um, it was actually Christmas morning, and um, my mum decided... Um, to take the camcorder out because she wanted. She often did a lot of recordings over different Christmas years. So she did like a recording back in '97. She did a recording 
I think a year before that as well. And she thought she wanted to do it again just to kind of cherish this memory. And obviously mm-hmm. she knew what one of the present was. Oh. So she wanted to record it. Top snake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. And then basically, so, um, so basically I was just opening my presents as normal. And then she kept saying, why didn't you open this present? And I was like, no, it's okay. Let me just open these smaller ones first. <laughs> She's like, no, I really think you should open this present. So I was like, all right, fine. I'll open the present. So I literally, um, I opened the box and I just see PS2. And then I was like, oh my gosh, it's a PS2. I was so happy. I was sick that day as well. But it was just like, oh. even that, like... Illness gone. Yeah, the illness gone. I, I was cured. See, PS2 cures illness. Yes. Fact. Fact. And um, yes, yeah, so I opened the box. I was so happy, and um, I got a bundle of games with it as well. Nice. So it was really cool. And um, uh, basically, we were gonna go to my nan's, and uh, just to well put out there, basically, me and Obsidian are actually cousins. Mm-hmm. So basically, he he had a PS2 long before I did, but basically, um, uh, because he already had his PS2 down there, my mom just said, "Bring the games, and mm-hmm. then you can play it there." So. Yeah, we basically did that. And, yeah. Do you remember what games you were playing then? Um, We played... I think we just played Cell Damage, but that's another story. So I'll go into that in the next part. Fair enough. So, yeah, wait for part two. Stay tuned. Fair enough. (laughs) Okay. Um, I don't have too many, like, stories I can remember because, like I've already mentioned, I was pretty much the um, kid who went around people's houses and, like, kind of had that. Because I was more of, like, a handheld kind of kid when I did get my consoles. But I was all the kid who was just watching the games to some extent. So I wasn't really playing you know too much and that kind of stuff but i do remember one time back when i was in secondary store being about 10 11 going around one of my friend's house who um he was at the school at the time and obviously it'd be like long awaited like because obviously there's a certain kind of energy and a certain kind of tension when you're going around one of your best friend's house for the first time yes yes there there's is a certain there is, kind of there is some energy yeah there. it is it so, is true it's true so it's, day's been set and pretty much we had to do the school day. I think it was a Friday. Okay. And my friend was like, oh, yeah, we're going to play. For whatever reason, it's kind of hard to set the story up, but I had seen the advertisements for Grand Theft Auto San Andres. Okay. And played on a TV. And they had the song, I think it's, um, yeah, Welcome to the Jungle. And that oh, was yeah, the yeah, advert yeah, yeah. for it. Yeah, yeah. And I remember my friend was like, yeah, when we get to Mars, we're going to play on the PS2 and play some games. And he was like, and I was like, yeah, still sing that. So, oh yeah, welcome to the jungle. And he's like, yeah, yeah, we're gonna play that um, GTA. No, yeah, I was like, oh yeah, I'm really looking forward to that GTA. And he was like, yeah, San Andres. And I'm like, oh, okay, but we're gonna play Grand Theft Auto. And he's like, yeah, San Andres. I'm like, why does he keep saying San Andres? What the yeah. hell is San Andres? It wasn't until I got to his house that he was like, yeah, now we're gonna play Grand Theft Auto San Andres. And I was like, oh, th- that's the same game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't know it was. I yeah. didn't know it was called San Andreas. Yeah, yeah. The adventures we had, we must have spent a good five hours just trying to get to the two-player area in that game. That's funny. Once we finally got to the area, it was chaos unleashed. We were just doing whatever, destroying things, blowing yeah. things up, doing what all the kinds of things you do in GTA Five when you're not for not GTA Five, San Andreas when you're not bothering with the story, and eventually we just die, and then we'd have to start the whole cycle again where it's like. We gotta get to the two player. Oh funny. my god! It's like you know, it yeah. literally became like an action movie. It's like, quick, get in the car, get in the car. Yeah. You know, like, oh no, I fell out the car. I don't know how to jump over the yeah. wall. You know what? Hilarious. We did that probably about four times on four separate days, basically. That's funny. That's all we did. All we did was got to get to the two player area. That's hilarious. It's like the first time I ever played that game. It was absolutely hilarious. I just remember that being like one of my first experiences with like the PS2 and that, and just cherished memory uh do you have another story you want to um this one is going to just be a quick one before i mention cell damage okay um basically i remember the first time um a lot of people talk about the red screen of death on ps2 yeah i remember when that first came on and um i i think i put a i put a game in but i didn't read it so that randomly came up and i thought the ps2 was broken (laughs) so i was really upset I was like, oh my God, my PS2 is broken. Understandable. But then after like I reset and it was fine after that. But a lot of people like gets, they got scared when they saw that screen. I I watched it back. Yeah. The music isn't very nice. It's not, is it? No. It's it's upsetting and it's a little bit scary, to, to be honest. I mean, 
that is kind of the reason why there are so many memes where people just literally show the startup logo of the yeah. PS1 or PS2 and people cheering and going insane. Yeah. You know, next to images of it going to the red screen and people literally punching their screens yeah. or getting like angry because that was, that was emotional times, man. <laughs> like technology, I mean, I do, I think to some extent technology is not as great as it was, you know, back then. Mm. But um, technology was quite fickle back then, you know. <laughs> I mean, you only had to, like, drop your PS2 and that's it. Yeah. You know, and then sometimes you could, like, be tossing your PS2 in the air and it work forever. Yeah. You know, it happens. <laughs> I mean, I've played games on PS2 that literally look like someone has taken a knife and slashed it and works perfectly fine. <laughs> so, compared to an Xbox 360 game where you even fucking breathe on that and that's done. Yeah. <laughs> that's done forever. I literally yeah. had... I put a copy of um, Blue Dragon in my Xbox 360 yeah. It, it, it somehow scratched a perfect circle on it. Yeah. Somehow. That happened on a lot of Xbox games. Yeah, and I had to return that. And uh, fun fact, Blue Dragon on, on Xbox 360 has four discs. Oh, no. Yeah, so the fact that I had to return the game halfway through it because disc two scratched was the worst thing ever. <sighs> but we're talking about PS2. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hear of another story, which also involves Obsidian. Um, I remember one day, I was meeting up with Obsidian, obviously around Grandma's house, and I was just like, yo, I heard that shop has a copy of Marvel vs. Capcom 2. So we decide, we're going to go get that copy of Marvel vs. Capcom 2. <laughs> so we trek all the way up there, we get the copy, and then for the next maybe six hours, we just banging up Marvel vs. Capcom 2. We just going in and we like doing arcade mode, we're unlocking all the characters, we're just going in. It almost broke my fingers. I've never played a game <laughs> that hard in my life. It got to the point where I must have woke up the next day, school day, Monday, and I look at my hands and my hands were like red and blue in certain points. Oh I had like God. indents in my hands. I was trying hard to run. People asked me, what the hell happened to your hands? And I was just like, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And they were like, what the hell are you doing? And I was like, just playing the game, I'm doing the combo. <laughs> <laughs> So I remember that day because we never worked a game out that hard in my life and that was on the PS2 because Marvel is a Capcom 2 forever. Mm, that, game that is the best out of the whole. That is, that is the best. And there's also rumours there might be another one. But oh. Uh, oh. we don't know. We don't know. Yeah, don't yeah. Know. Uh -huh. We'll see. We'll see. But do um, you want to hear the next story? Yeah, so I'll go into Cell Damage now. <gasps> part 2. So, part 2. Basically, um, so that was one of the first... Well, that was one of the first games I received on the PS2. Um, not a lot of people know about Cell Damage Overdrive. Um, yeah. Do you know about it? I think so. Um, it's not really ringing a bell yeah. right now. But if you show me images, I probably yeah, oh, you'll yeah, probably be yeah. 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 Um, so basically, it's a um, vehicular com um, combat kind of game. Mm -hmm. That's the mechanics of it. Yeah. And basically, you have like a number. I think it's like usually they have like eight contestants, and it's like a map. You're on a map. And then you've got like weapons and basically you drive into the box and it gives you the weapon. So your car will just have like, like a massive axe coming out of it. And you have to basically um, defeat your opponents by damaging their car and um, making sure their well, life points are down. And whoever does the most damage is the winner. Yeah. So a bit like Twisted Metal? Yeah. yeah. In that case. Okay, yeah, yeah. In that sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, but oh my gosh, me and Obsidian. Yeah. We used to play that game like every day because you used to come around mine a lot. So it'd be like... Yep, so let me drive a drive. Let's put that in. And it, yeah, it'd be funny. He would like, yeah, he would always, um, he would always come first. He would always come first. I'd always be like last. Because obviously it takes the mix sometimes with games. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I remember when the main game we always played, me and Obsidian, was like um, Left 4 Dead 2. Oh. That game. I mean... That could be a whole podcast. Right yeah, there, that, but... yeah, that's discussion. That's another discussion. That's a discussion. Just, just get ready for the discussion. Simply titled Left 4 Dead 2. Yes, we, <laughs> I think that needs to happen. Coming soon, 2020. <laughs> get ready. Um, we was playing that game too hard. Yeah. Like that game was the reason why I got a 360 first. Oh, really? Yeah. That oh, was wow. the reason because I remember literally going, oh yeah, I'm going to get um, a PS3. So the first game I'm going to get is Left 4 Dead 2. <laughs> and my friend's like, it's not on PS3. Three and I was like, "What well, again? Three sixty then?" <laughs> <laughs> like that was the, that was the deciding factor. That's funny. Um, wow. Uh, next story I have it also does kind of involve a scene, but it's a quick one, and um, same kind of similar story to um, when we were getting Marvel's Capcom two. Yeah. 
went to the same shop. It was like, yeah, I heard they got a copy of Killer 7 there. So, of course, went up to that shop, traveled all the way up there, got a copy of Killer 7. Killer 7 is a very interesting game. It's very hard to categorize that game because it is so wild yeah, and is. so all over the place. I mean, it is the only game I can think of where the second level has the tutorial. Yeah. You have to somehow figure out what the hell was going on to get to the second level for the game to then explain how to play the game properly. Mm. It is a freakish and original yes. but really good game. Yeah. Like, it is a very strong game. Me and Obsidian were playing that game, and Obsidian was playing it, and it got to the point where Obsidian was like, you know, I don't really like how these... Because every time you kill an enemy, it makes like a blood-curdling laugh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it got to the point where Obsidian was like, you know, I'm not really sure. I'm not really liking these guys laughing. We, I think we got to the point where you talk to the severed head in the washing machine. And then we went, you know, we're going to turn this game off. <laughs> because we was just like, no, nah, man, it's eight o'clock at night. I still have to go to bed. No, nah, this game just a <laughs> bit funny. too, it's just a bit too yeah. freaky. Like Obsidian just turned the game off at that point. Cause he was like, I'm not. Yeah. No, no, no. We were like, we're not really in the mood for this. Cause yeah. lo and behold, some creepy stuff happens in this game. I mean, characters are weird enough. I mean, yeah. obviously you have the guy holding the mask. You have yeah. like Travis as well. Who's yeah. just some weird ghost thing. Everyone talks weird in this game. And like yeah. this weird, I don't even know how to describe it. Just look up killer seven. If you, yeah. even if you don't, even if you don't like video games or you don't know anything about it, just, just watch it like a gameplay yeah. of killer seven. You'll understand like that game. I was actually going to ask you when you guys are playing it, was he playing it in the back room? I think we might've been. Yeah, when you play creepy games in that room, you just kind of just want to turn it off and yeah, just leave the room. Yeah, there's something about that room where it's like... It mm. is, isn't it? It's not... Because it's no one goes in that room. Yeah, it's just like... Mm, kind of get an odd feeling. We're just like... Mm. Yeah. You know, there's been points where we've been like, yeah, maybe we want to turn this game off, you know, but... Yeah. You know? uh, your next story. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I actually want to talk about the game The Warriors... Oh boy. I had to bring this up. Oh. I have to. Oh boy. Oh my god. Um so I yeah, I have loved this game. Oh, it's, yeah, a, it's a really it's, strong it's game. It's such a good game. One of the best games that Rockstar did. Yeah. Oh my god, it's the music. It had some of the best loading themes <laughs> I can ever imagine. Let's not forget the multiplayer quotes. Yes. Oh my god, they were the best. Oh, oh my god, I still quote them today. <laughs> just like, I am the warrior king. Oh, <laughs> uh, what is his name? Virgil. I think it was yeah, yeah, Virgil. Yeah, saying that. Oh yeah. my god. Like, that game is just a fun time. Yeah, it was actually very fun. Um, I Like, Obsidian had the game first, so he mainly played the game. I just kind of sat and watched. Mm -hmm. Um... And we always play the co-op mode, but I forgot what mode it was. It's the one, I think it's King of the Hill. I think it is King, King of the Hill. King of the Hill. Yeah. And um, it's funny because like when you um, it, when you get to the top and you have to just keep throwing people off, it's yeah. the, the animations are so funny how they fall. It's almost like, it's not quite ragdoll. It's like they do an animation and then stop yeah. in the animation. So it's yeah. just like this frozen yeah. animation <laughs> just falling and then yeah. it just weirdly lands and then reanimates and gets back up it's yeah, so bizarre it's, it's actually really funny um i actually um i got the game many years later because i i just missed the game mm. um so i got the game many years later and i played the story through mm. um i quite enjoyed because the film obviously came out well, well long time ago 1979 yeah. yeah and um it takes place kind of in the midway of the where the game is, because yeah. it's obviously the bit where I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. say I have not seen the Warriors, so please don't oh, spoil it for okay, me. Oh, okay, I won't say then. Yeah. what it is then. <laughs> but basically, the game. So the game has okay. So you have got the middle point, and then the game starts off from before the middle point, mm -hmm. and then it plays the middle point to the end. That's a cool so, concept. So yeah. So I would actually, since you haven't really you haven't watched the film, yeah, I would recommend you play the game first. Oh really? And then watch the film. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. I would recommend that. But, um, yeah, I, yeah, I, that's what I want to say on that one. But great game. Love it. Are we, are we done going down memory lane? I think I've only got one more, one more story. Right, Have you right. got any more stories? No, I'm done with stories for okay. now. Okay. Okay. I'll make this one as well. 
I'll try and make it as quick as possible because no, I've got a lot, a lot to say on this one. But there's yeah. a lot to say about the PS2. Yeah, though, isn't it's there? a lot. You know? It's just so like maybe we might have to make a part two discussion. Maybe, maybe there'll be a part two. Yeah. I don't know. A lot of promises on this yeah. episode. Yeah, or maybe PS1. We could do a PS1 discussion. At I some point. I'll have to double check yeah. on the anniversary of that console. Yes. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but um, I want to talk about Bloody Raw 3. Oh. I had to bring this one. Yeah, up because because you introduced me to Bloody Roar. Yeah, I introduced. I was not aware raccoon. of Bloody Roar Roar until Al showed me the light. <laughs> yeah. So, um, a lot of people that know of this game, everyone really liked the third installment the most. Mm. He, uh, same with Obsidian, he really liked yeah. the third one. Yeah. My opinion, I like the second one better, but the reason why is because I liked the um. Look, the look of the characters more the, the character designs more in t- number two and there's okay. a specific character that I liked more in number two because he was more menacing in number two than he was in number three is it the lizard guy? no okay. it's not him okay. um, without going into too much depth because we can be here for hours yeah um, I enjoyed it again Obsidian had the game way before Mm. And uh, so we used to play it all the time. He was really good at the game. Naturally. Naturally good at the game. And I was always rubbish. I was always player two and I was always losing. So I was just like, oh, gosh. Well, I, said, well, I made a promise to myself one day I will get good at this game. I mm. will get so good. And um, sadly, he actually lost his copy of the game. Oh, did he? He lost it. When oh, There's a curse at my nan's house. If you lose a game, that's it. You're not finding it ever again. That's it. It's gone. Jeez. It's lost in the abyss. That's it. Damn. And it's funny because one day my aunt, she saw the game and she put it somewhere. So me and Obsidian were like, where did you put it? And she was like, oh, we, I put it on the shelf. And we looked and it wasn't there. So we're like, okay, it's gone. It's that back room. It's just, yeah, it's that back Some, room. Something about that back room. It's like man. it went from the back room to the front room and then it just disappeared. Just... Anyway. One, one day we're going to do a podcast in that back room. We're going to do a Halloween special in that back yeah, room. Yeah, we should. One we of the should. scariest places I know. <laughs> yeah, it actually is a scary place. <laughs> And um, basically, many years, uh, I think a couple of years later, we went, me and um, Obsidian went with my mum to Croydon and um, there was a game there and uh, there was obviously PS2 games were still in the shops back then. Mm. So they had like a, just like a metal box. And I started looking because there's a a whole bunch of PS2s, it was packed full of it. So I like started looking through the PS2 games and then I saw Bloody Roll 3. I was like, Obsidian, come here, look, look. And I said, mum. This game, please buy it. <laughs> she was like, "Okay, I'll buy it for you." I was like, oh. "So then, me and Obsidian, when we got home, PS2, Bloody Roll Free, we're playing it now." And um, yeah, so we um, so the game, well, the game was good. And then, well, it's it's a long story, Bloody Roll. <laughs> it's a really long story. But basically, my copy, um, because I had to, I um, at the time I had to move to my nan's house, so a lot of my games I had to move from my house to my nan's. Mm-hmm. Um, because I lost the case for it, mm-hmm. um, the CD got really scratched. Oh. So I could still play the game, but the music was very jumpy. Mm. So it would be very annoying to play sometimes. And the game would often freeze. So it'd be annoying. So again, many years later, I went to Hyper Japan and I saw it and I said, I'm buying another fresh copy and I'm keeping this one in the case at all times because I do not want this to get ruined in any form of way. But um, the gameplay... It's the last, I would say, because kind of linking it to the second, the next game after it, uh, not Bloody Raw Extreme or Primal Fury, mm. but Bloody Raw 4. Yeah. As everyone knows, it's the worst Bloody Raw game mm. that was in the franchise. Reason being is that um, the gameplay changed a lot. Mm. Um, so basically in Bloody Raws 1, 2 and 3 and Primal Fury, you would have the human life and you'd have the beast life. And basically... You would have to, um, so you'd have to rely a lot. Well, in Bloody Roar 4, you'd have to rely a lot on your beast form. So you'd have to sometimes sacrifice your human life to make the beast gauge get higher. Mm. Whereas in the in number ones, two and three and four, um, sorry, one, two and three, um, it would be a case where you don't have to rely just on your beast form. You can rely on your human form as well. Um, so yeah, but I'd say it's one of the best games ever, man. I, I have to send you that um, retrospective that YouTuber Mac McMuscles did on Bloody Raw. Yeah, I've seen it. Oh, you've seen oh, it? I've okay, seen yeah. it already. That's a good yeah. one. Oh, boy. Yeah. Good stuff. That's a game. I need to get the rest of the Bloody Raw games. Yeah, I definitely recommend it. I think I've got one of them. I don't know which one. I think it's two. Two. Okay. I think it's two. I don't have any on the PS2. So okay, it might probably, be just one or two. It's one have. or two. Yeah. Um. Damn. 
Damn, damn, damn. Yeah, with I'll, the, uh... I'll cut it short with Bloody Rock because I could be here for hours. So. No, that's a, that's a that's a podcast in itself. Yeah, discussion, discussion. Just that's I'll discussion talk about Bloody Rock. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for two hours. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we would love to know if you have any PlayStation Two memories. You can hit us up at Raccoon Plus Friends at Gmail com if you want to email us, and maybe we can do said part two. Um, maybe you guys can come in with some hot takes, if anything. If not, there's plenty of for us to talk about in terms of um, PlayStation 2. I mean, I didn't even talk about Silent Hill, just for example. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, there can definitely be more. Yeah. But um, I think we need to wrap up this podcast. Yeah. It's been quite eventful, but we got to leave you guys with the video of the episode, which is going to be Thundercat with the hilariously titled Dragon Ball Do-Rag. <laughs> this guy is a Dragon Ball Z fan that will become apparent the moment you watch this music video. Um, even the uh, artwork for this single, which literally features him in said Dragon Ball do-rag, <laughs> features, yeah. has the line, waves that beat yo ass. <laughs> so you can kind of tell this is a guy who doesn't take himself too seriously. Yeah. Uh, take that in mind. Also, do not do what he does in this music video. <laughs> Oh, he, music video. It's too he, funny. Mm. Uh, one thing I want to mention real quick, uh, especially speaking to you, Al, did you actually notice that um, all three people in the music video are actually famous? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, they are. Um, the first person appears, I won't quite spoil it, is yeah. a comedian. Okay. Second person is a music artist, mm-hmm. goes by the name of Caliucci's. Okay. And uh, the third group of people are a band. Oh, wow. Heim. I believe that's how you say it. Haim or Haim. Oh, okay. H-A-I-M. Okay. Yeah, so funny enough, yeah, they all kind of cameo in that music video. That's pretty cool. So, really funny music video. Probably one of my favourite songs of this year so yeah. far. Music this year has been doing pretty well. I could play you guys at least an hour worth of good music from this year so far. <laughs> but um, I think we're going to leave it on that. Anything else you'd like to add to this podcast before we wrap it up? No, I'm all good. Cool. Um... I, well, we'll hopefully see you on the next podcast, whatever that's going to be. Um, I've got discussions, as we already made promises with so many discussions. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, we'll see what happens. But um, I'll end this podcast like I always do by saying I was the Angry Raccoon. I'm the Indigenous Owl. And we will see you on the next podcast. <laughs>